Here we have an amateur astronomer capable of catching these things with his small telescope and a small camcorder. As it always goes with discoverers of great things, he has no funding, no high-end telescopes, no high-end cameras. He has found something that through his apparatus that he invented is capable of capturing interstellar spacecraft. If the starships that John Leonard Walson has captured in deep space are ours, then I am glad we have them out there protecting our planet. What they are protecting us from is thought-provoking, to say the least. These things are enormous. On the other hand, if they are not ours, I wonder who or what is operating them. There was a fear then that, uh, of something out there. It became a very big concern. Asteroids, UFOs, people coming from other places. Paranoia was also there within the government. You know, at certain levels, you could feel it. You knew it was happening. I noticed the satellite's positionings. I said, now this is supposed to be a system that tracks radar anomalies on Earth, right? You know, the whole thing, the movement. Yep, that's what it does. And I said, well, why are half of them pointed towards the outer space? towards the moon, towards areas that are just blank space. Well, I don't know. It was a reply. He says, never thought about it. He says, well, at least half of those satellites you got up there aren't looking at Earth. <laughs> I said, what are they looking for? He says, well, you got to have need to know, know about that. I said, I see. In other words, who's coming? <laughs> he says, we don't know. End of subject. Ever since I got involved with John Leonard Wilson, I always now look at the Big Dipper in a totally different way. I can't wait to have people all over the world seeing them. The great thing about the interstellar starships is we know where they are. One of the scientists said it's the Star Wars project. Okay. If that's the case, where were we when they put these things up there? When one thinks how much one large structure weighs, it's inconceivable how we got it into deep space. The machinery it would take to construct one of these things is no less conceivable. And the fact that they can expand and transform into different shapes in deep space is extraordinary. There are questions I have. If they are man-made, then we must have technologies that are way beyond our comprehension. What kind of energy systems are being applied here? This is one big puzzle that has yet to be solved, or at the very least, acknowledged.
As John Leonard Watson follows them with his telescope, they are in perfect sync with the Earth's orbit. Posing as a star in Orion's belt, the Big Dipper, Vega, or in other constellations. This means that perhaps if one structure is 2.5 light years away, it may be orbiting around Earth at millions of miles per hour. With those kinds of velocities and with the capability of being able to effortlessly change and transform, it takes an enormous amount of energy. What kind of alloys are they made of that allows them to transform and retract at these velocities in deep space? It has taken us at least 10 years for the United States with the help of Russia and other countries to construct the space station. And when you look at these huge structures that are in deep space, you just have to wonder, what are these things? Who inhabits them? There are rumors about secret projects where men and women have been sent into outer space as an exchange program. You need to think about this. We have wars going on right now here on Earth. Our planet is in turmoil. People of the earth have no concept as to what reality is anymore. We are too busy fighting terrorists, too busy looking out for human enemies. Is something more sinister awaiting our planet? Are we under observation and under close scrutiny? We don't know what we are about to learn about the interstellar communities that are obviously among us orbiting our planet in our immediate solar system. For the moment, we have barely tipped the iceberg.